Welcome back. If the idea of vegan food has ever turned you off, maybe you just haven't found the right recipes yet. Simply Delicious Vegan is a new cookbook by YouTuber Caitlin Shoemaker, who actually lives in the Vancouver area right here in Washington. She showed us her delicious chili recipe and why eating vegan doesn't have to be intimidating. I first went vegan originally for health reasons. It was actually when I created an Instagram foodie account. I was scrolling through and I was like, wow, a lot of this delicious food is also vegan. Maybe if I try it, I can make food that looks as good. And so I've always loved photography and cooking in the kitchen. So I decided to try it out. And here we are five years later. Well, that's awesome. Congratulations to you. So what are we, what are we making today? So today I'm going to show everyone how to make a Tex-Mex black bean chili. It's a recipe from my new cookbook, Simply Delicious Vegan. I love all Tex-Mex. How do we get started? All right, so for the sake of time, I already went ahead and I sauteed half of a diced yellow onion and three cloves of minced garlic in this pot. In a splash of water, you just want to saute it until it becomes translucent. Um, and then so the next step we're going to add in our spices and some more veggies. So we have a tablespoon of chili powder, a tablespoon of ground cumin. And then for some Tex-Mex flavor, we have three diced jalapenos. If you want to see more of a mild chili, you can remove the seeds uh, before you dice them. And then we also have half of a bunch of cilantro that I diced pretty finely. This is gonna sort of melt into the chili. And fun fact, the cilantro stems actually have as much flavor as the leaves. So it's just don't have to go to waste. I had no idea. That is a fun fact. Yeah, I like to add this to my soups, and then you can save the leaves for garnish uh, most of the time because they tend to look prettier. Um, yeah. So we're going to saute this for about a minute okay. and let the flavors come out. And then the great thing about this chili is, and most chilies, there's a lot of hands-off time. Afterwards, we're just going to add everything in, then bring it to a boil and let it simmer until it's as thick as we like it. I love that. So what do we add in with, at once, the, the spices have sauteed? I mean, is it something that's super easy? Am I going to have to soak beans overnight? So the recipe in my cookbook is for an instant pot. You can soak beans overnight, but I'm just doing a stovetop version here and canned beans work just as well. So our yeah. spices look good. So we have three cans of black beans that I have drained and then rinsed well. So we're gonna add those in. And then to bulk our chili up, we have a 28 ounce can of petite diced tomatoes. And then my sort of secret ingredient for the chili, it adds a lot of Tex-Mex flavor, is store-bought salsa. We're gonna add a cup of that in. And oh. because the tomato and the onion and all the spices are pre-cooked, it adds a lot of depth of flavor. And then when we add it to our chili, it just infuses the beans and everything else with even more flavor. It's really hard to beat store-bought salsa. I mean, if they're gonna do the work for me, I might as well let them. Truly that. And that is such a clever little tip to throw in there for, for just that extra kick of flavor. And I'll tell you this, I've never made a chili without Rotel tomatoes, not to like mention brands or anything, but they do make a good fire roasted tomato. Oh yeah. Um, tell us more about your cookbook. What else is inside? Sure. So I have my cookbook right here. The title is Simply Delicious Vegan. There are a hundred vegan and gluten-free recipes that are made from simple and accessible ingredients, but they definitely don't skip on flavor. So I know not everyone eats vegan food or maybe intimidated when they come to a plant-based diet. So my reason for this cookbook was to encourage everyone to have a little fun in the kitchen and try new recipes. So we have some savory mains. We also have desserts, breakfast options, the whole, the whole shebang. I love that because it's like a way of kind of looking in and delving into that without feeling like you're going, you know, all this way or all that way, which is fantastic. So you said there are gluten-free recipes in there too. That caught my ear because I recently found that I couldn't eat gluten. So no. I'm always on the hunt. Yeah, every recipe in the cookbook is gluten-free and also refined sugar-free too. Um, but I do give substitution options. So, you know, if you can't eat gluten and you want to substitute regular bread or switch it up, uh, I try to make the cookbook as user-friendly as possible. So you can really use whatever you have in your pantry. But you know, it's important nowadays when we're all staying at home a little more too. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So you just put that in a regular pot, right? I just got a, I just got a Dutch oven. Is that something I could cook in that? Oh yeah, totally. Yeah, you can do this in a Dutch oven or a regular pot. You just want it to be big enough to hold the chili. So I also just added two cups of water and then now all we have to do is bring it to a boil and then we'll let it simmer down to however thick you would like it really. So probably mm -hmm. around 15 to 20 minutes. But I went ahead and prepared a bowl in advance so we can go ahead and move on to the toppings. Yes, let's do the toppings. So I know a lot of people, it depends uh, what you might like your chili to be topped with. 
But for this recipe, because we have some Tex-Mex flavor, I wanted to continue to enhance that. So I just have some of the leaves of our cilantro and I'm going to top it with that. And then personally, I like to top my chili with sour cream. Um, so here I have some vegan sour cream substitute. It's actually just made from soaked cashews and water. You can put it in a blender until it's nice and thick. So you get a nice scoopable consistency. You can go ahead and add a dollop of that on top as well. So you still get some nice creaminess and tanginess, but if you're eating a dairy-free diet, it's a great substitute. All right, so producer Joseph and I are going to be making this tonight. And if you'd like to give Caitlin's chili recipe a shot, We've got it on our New Day website.